Stay With Me by The Faces. This is a song that is in open E tuning, and I want to teach this for all those people that perhaps still haven't learnt a song in any open tuning or open E tuning especially. I did a video a while ago of top five songs in open E tuning. That was mostly on acoustic. This is a great electric guitar song. And all it means is we can play basic major chords with open strings. So in this case, all my open strings are tuned to an E major chord but then with one finger. And in the verses of Stay With Me, we play one finger chords in the verse and the chorus at fret five and fret seven and 10. And then back again. And the intro is from fret 12, fret 10, back to five. So you've got those two sections. And section two. This makes it much easier to play a blues riff rather than having to do kind of the big stretch that you might have to do in a status quo song. Uh, but let me demo this and then we'll break it down. So the fast introduction and the fast ending uses chords at the 12th fret with one finger, mostly staying to the power chord, but also often playing the major third, which is at string four, to a sus four chord with the middle finger just one fret higher on string three, at fret 10, middle finger on 11, on string three, and at fret five. And just a quick whiz through the verses, and this is the chorus as well. It's five, seven, 10, and five. And the third finger is always on string five, and it's two frets above where the first finger is. Now we're gonna look at the detail of all that, but they're the bare bones of everything you need to be able to do for this lesson to be at your level. If that's too tough for you, or you just want some acoustic guitar songs, check out that top five songs in open E, and make sure you learn a song in open E tuning today. Don't put it off any longer. So the song starts at fret 12, but with a pick of string five, hammer on of string five with the third finger, and then a strum and there's often this eighth strumming. You know, that eighth strum, one and two and three and four is always there, we're just accenting. And that gives it that rhythm, just the same as, same as we're going to do later. Little finger, staying strict to the original, goes at fret 15 which is still just an E chord. E sus4 with the first finger. And then third finger. That's on string four this time. So we're always gonna do licks. Every time on string three with the first finger, sometimes on string four, sometimes on string five. So this is what you want to get used to for all the embellishments. Two, three, four, and a. That's the first one. Uh, 
Almost the same, just a slightly uh, simplified version on fret 10. And then on fret 5, different riff, same, same melody notes that we had, same embellishment notes. That's for the first one. And for the second bar of this uh, fifth fret chord, pretty much the same again. Uh, maybe a slightly simplified version this time. So, One more time, super slow, and then we'll move on to the verse. Two, three, four, and a. Once you hit that A, it's a count of one, two, three, and in the verses, we start on the AND and change chord on the AND. This is the weird thing about this, man. If you're not used to playing on the ANDs on more syncopated rhythms, this is going to catch you out. So the count is two, three, four, AND one, AND two, AND three, AND four, AND one, AND two, AND three, AND four, AND one, AND two, AND three, and four. Let's break it down again. It's one bar on the fifth fret, second bar on fret seven, fret 10, bookending the chord progression on fret five, and it's just that four bars, one bar of each in each position, but we go half a beat early. So one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and. That's what we repeat. if I'm just to stay in here. So two strums of just fifth fret, two strums with the seventh fret held down by the third finger. Make sure you can do that in one position before you change chords and basically keep that going. Here I'm pausing on that, on the end of what I'm basically not playing beat one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. If you don't play on the one, you move on the end of one. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. And it just gives it all the swagger in the world. It's fantastic. Riff playing and songwriting by Hollywood. And it just repeats like that, but with variations. So just one more time through that take to make sure you can loop this progression. Start another fifth fret. In one, two, three, four. And one, and two, and three, and four. And 
and if you can do that, you should be able to jam along to the original recording to get that kind of scratchy sound. I'm using a plexi on this. And that's a pretty decent tone for this kind of song. Humbuckers really helps on the treble pickup. But if you want that kind of scratchy tone that's so famous on this original recording, some of that's due to how the amp's mic'd up. But if you use something like a Fender amp turned up kind of all the way, that would do this or any kind of fuzz pedal that recreates that kind of breakup of a small old valve amp. That'll get you there. Before we jam through this together for one final time, uh, to put it all together, I just want to cover how Ronnie would kind of improvise some of these uh, rhythm parts, improvising within a rhythm part rather than a lead part, because um, it's really cool and it gives you some freedom. Otherwise, you're just stuck to playing exactly the same exactly the same part um, identically every time, which isn't what happens. We've got a couple of variations. One example of this can be found on that repetition when we come back to the A chord for the second time in the verse, and this happens plenty. So this is at fret five and fret eight, basically doubling up the where you'd kind of have that status quo riff, right? Well, he's doing a variation on this. which is varied plenty, but it's at the fret five, fret eight, and seven. So kind of that dominant seventh to sixth interval. Um, and then a minor third to major third, which is found throughout classic rock, really. cool is just one slight variation that you can add and others are just that's one great example of a variation you could have and basically gives you enough tools to vary this yourself um, to kind of jam it and not have to stick to one or any other lead lines but always come back to that most simple one Especially when you feel like you've done too much in a row. Just come back to that one. But once you've done that a couple of times, you can basically add that one. Just as some examples. And if you haven't spotted any of that in the original recording, listening to it again on headphones will really help bring that out of you and then you can try and add it into your regular playing. So have a go at that this time, or if this is totally new to you and it's a real struggle just to play along at all, just stay to that core one. Let's join in together. Let's have a go at this. And if you've enjoyed this video, check out the Andy Guitar membership. Links at the top of the description. I covered this sort of thing all the time, weekly in my live streams, and it's also in a bunch of the online courses that we've got available there. So here we go, just slightly slower than original tempo, and we're gonna go through the whole thing. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And then 
we go back for the very ending. And feel free to add in the Rolling Stones chords. Oh, and of course the ending is eight, seven, six, five. Hope you've enjoyed that. Here's that open E tuning video. I'll leave an open G tuning video on the screen as well that I think you might enjoy. More help with all of this at andyguitar.co.uk forward slash membership.